All right, so from whence we last left off, we had this uh, material here, right? Now, uh, if you open this up, you'll see it's actually in a folder. Uh, there's actually a whole bunch of layers inside of this, and that's actually what's making this up. But I want to show you basically what these are so you get an idea of what you're working with, okay? So basically, if we turn these off one after another, it works just like Photoshop, where the bottom layer and then the top layer and another layer, and each one rides on top of the one previous. So on the very bottom is the metal, right? And then above that is the paint, okay? So you see we have this paint layer. And notice that if you look real closely, you see there's this little um, uh, bucket tool. These are what we call fill layers. Uh, basically, it means they're solid colors that you can make general adjustments to. So if I select this layer, uh, I can make all these different adjustments to this, okay? And if I select the paint, I can do these as well, all right? And then above the paint is then this rust that's laying on top. And then above that is basically uh, this filter. See the little S there, the little substance thing? It's adding this filter that's uh, sharpening it, basically. Okay, so we can turn that off. It doesn't really do too awful much, but it's just there to add a little more pizzazz, I guess. Okay, so... Um, now, besides those layers, the other thing you'll notice, uh, particularly on these two here, is that, we'll leave this on there, actually, uh, is that there's this here. This is a mask. So if you're familiar with masks in Photoshop, and you should be, uh, what's black uh, is see-through, and what's white is not. So what this is doing is, in the paint, you see where it's black there? It looks like a Pollock over there on the right, on the hover. Um that is where this metal is showing through. So it's doing the red, but then showing it through there. And this is doing the um, this is doing the same thing if I were over it, right? So you can kind of tell like on um, the thing there that the the black is showing most of it, um, and then uh, a lot of rust in that area, and then not so much in the others. So if you look underneath, I think it's probably pretty rusty. Anyway, okay. Um, and that's how that is working. Now, the way these, these masks and things, so you'll notice when I click on this, it shows me what's in here. When I click on the masks, um, it's showing you this mask editor. So this mask is actually being generated by something. So if I select this, you'll see generator mask editor. And then it basically, it's using, um, uh, some information in order to lay this out. The information it's using, if you look, are those textures that we baked earlier. So you remember earlier we had a bait we had to go to texture settings. We went down here and we baked those maps. So there's normal map, there's all these different maps, and these different maps tell the um, tell different things about the model. So they're baked from the geometry, based off of the geometry. So for instance, the ambient occlusion map is if you remember basically wherever there's like crevices or areas that are kind of next to each other it's going to make it look darker in those areas right so that's the ambient occlusion so uh you know down in here and in there and cracks and crevices that's going to show up curvature map kind of does almost the opposite what it's going to do is it's going to find where there are um uh, uh where things would be kind of worn so like on the edge here or on the edge of this you know, the edge of this, this edge, it's going to kind of um, basically be on these peaks uh, is where it's going to show up. And then normal maps are just based off of um, the geometry itself and just kind of what the normals are. OK, and then there's also a thickness map and that basically is for thickness. So think about like if light was this is being x-rayed, right, it would this would come up if um, this would come up as like really black because this is really thin, but then like the body of this car is much thicker, right? So it, it creates a map based off of that. All right. So what it's doing is it's using those various maps in order to figure out um, how to apply uh, itself to it. So in this case, if you look, notice that this ambient occlusion, see how it's really high? Mind you, this is the rust. Where, where do you think you have the most um cavity like most uh shadows being cut in right in this area right because obviously the surface here there's not much here right in these crevices right in here right it's right where you would expect it to be so if i take this ambient occlusion down right you're going to see it's not going to show up as much because it's generating this mass from the ambient occlusion now you notice it's not using curvature at all curvature is not one of the things if i pull that up you're going to start to see it uh hopefully maybe a little bit, 
you'll start to see it in some other areas, okay? I don't know if it's going to, yeah, you can't really see it, but, um, but that's basically what it's using. It's, uh, this is using basically ambient occlusion. It's not really using world space. It's pretty much using ambient occlusion in order to determine where the rust should be. Basically, it's looking in the crevices, right? Now, if we look at this one where we did the paint, right, where the paint's going to chip off, if I select the mask that it's masking out, you're going to see it doesn't use ambient occlusion and it's not using those other ones. What it is using a lot is the curvature which makes sense, right? Because that's where the paint would chip the most. So if I lower that, well, it's not doing too much. Um, you're going to see it's going to kind of get rid of all of it. And if I go like this, you're going to basically see more of it. So basically, the smart material uses those things that we baked and applies them. Otherwise, they wouldn't apply correctly. Um, so you have to make sure you do that baking. Now, what I want to do is kind of show you, we're going to kind of like make one more or less uh, so that you can kind of see how these are made and that will kind of explain what's happening here. But you can go through and you can basically adjust all these different parameters in order to get the look that you're looking for. And we'll do that after. All right. So I'm going to turn this one off. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and maybe um, apply... Um, We'll apply a, a metal material, right? Because that's that's the thing that's on the base there. So let's find a nice metal material. It's premium. Let's see. Uh, what are these? These look. Ugh. It's like one click goes beyond. Perfect. That's exactly what I was trying to get. No, that's perfect. There, oh, really? There we go. Like that. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Iron powdered. Iron greeny, iron brushed. I think brush makes sense. So let's put this up there. All right, so now you can see we have this iron brush. Now, before I carry on with the next things, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust it. So when I have it selected here, I can basically adjust its attribute. So the first section here, if you look, is just this uh, dealing with the UV, and I don't really care about that. Um, right now, it's affecting the color, height, um, all of them. All of these channels are turned on, which means it's affecting all of these channels. Um, so let's see channel mapping i don't care about that parameters metal color roughness let's see finish here we go so that's going to affect this so you see it, it the way that the scaling is is it's too rough so if i up the scaling hopefully there it goes it's going to make it more minute right because that doesn't the the scale of it didn't make sense it should go up to like 128 i think oh, okay well the other one's did. um so we're going to go we'll go all the way up now, brushing intensity, I'm going to take that down because that feels a little bit too strong to me. Say something like that-ish. I want some brushing, but not too crazy. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. It looks a little more accurate. Okay. Um, and then I could go through here and I could change the metal color and all that other business, but I'm not going to do that because I don't really feel like it. Okay. So above that, I'm going to want to put um, some sort of uh, painted color, right? So I'm going to look down here. we got plastic gloss, uh, plastic this thing a lot of plastics steel painted that seems like the right thing so let's take steel painted and put that up there and there we go okay now what the steel painted is is basically kind of the same thing as um uh what i had before um it's kind of the same thing as just doing a fill layer um but We'll wait on that. I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so I got the steel painted. Again, we have these um, same uh, these different parameters and stuff. I'm going to change my color. I want to do more of like a kind of a yellow, orangey kind of color. Kind of a classic old school color like that. Looks good. Great. Okay, let's click off. There we go. Um, let's see, technical parameters. So then it's got all these things here, which I don't really want to mess with um that's fine put normal on too is that gonna fix any of it let's see yeah, let's turn that back off okay um and that seems fine to me attributes yeah roughness yeah we'll leave it like that okay so now I've got my paint above my brushed metal. Um, is there, hang on a second. High position, height range. 
rust zero paint roughness oh that's probably what i want it's a little blotchy but i think that's supposed to be in there but i don't want it quite so blotchy so i'm going to see if i i think this will probably bring it down hopefully it doesn't really seem to do much um i'm not a huge fan of the blotchiness let's see um so what we're going to do is this. I'm going to say screw this because I don't think it's doing that good of a job anyway. So uh, I'm just going to show you how to basically make kind of this on your own. So if you go up in the top, there are basically three things here that we're going to use. Okay. So there is this fill, um, just regular layer that you paint, which is what this is, and a mask. And I'll show you the mask in a little bit. So we just want to add a fill. It's going to go on top of this. And I'm a, and uh, basically when you get a fill, it's just it's a one color block. You can see I'm not even allowed to paint on it. It's just one solid color, um, but basically it's a, a fill material. It's kind of the same thing as this, but it's just like a blank one, okay? So I want to go ahead and I'm say, okay, I want all these things on. I want to do all of them. See, it's blocking out the uh, metal there. And then if I go down here, you can see these are the options, okay? So I'm just going to take my base color, and let's see if I can get back to that yellow that I wanted. All right, we'll say like that. That looks good. Um, and we could do height and roughness and all these other things, right? So let's take metalness up a little bit so that it's a little bit or metallic. Um, and we'll take roughness down a little bit because I want it to be, I want it to have a little more sheen, right? Because see how that gives it more sheen. Um, normal, I'm not going to really mess with. And then um, I'm going to leave the height alone for a second. So you can kind of, we're going to come back to that one. Um, but you'll see we can do things with that as well. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention too. So you'll notice we've been doing, see how it says uniform color, uniform color all the way down. Uh, if you actually click on one of these, so let's say, let's do height. If I click on this, um, I can use a procedural texture as well. So like, for instance, I could do this 3D Perlin. And then you can see it's going to use basically this procedural texture, just like we have in Photoshop, and put that on there instead of just a flat color. In my case, I want that. I'm just going to exit out of that and have it be zero but just be aware that that exists that'll be useful maybe later on i don't know we'll find out anyway um so we've got this fill color we've got this um iron brush color uh good so what i want to do first is i just want to make it so that this fill um basically this fill color will um, seep through to this so the way that we do that is basically we take what we have here and then I'm going to make a mask, okay? So um, if you remember uh, masks, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Add Mask. Actually, I'm just going to right-click on it. Add Mask. You see there's Add White Mask or Add Black Mask. So if you remember, basically what's white will show what's on that layer. What's black does not. So I'm going to go ahead and do Add White Mask, we'll say. Okay? Now, if I had done Black Mask, you would see nothing. It would just look like this, Okay? Now what will happen is if I use my brush, let me just go to brushes, and let me say I just paint the basic hard. If I paint, right now you see the color is white. I'm going to hit X because it will automatically, come on, why you no paint black? Mm, let's see, where's the thing? Parameters, alpha, where are you at? There we go, metal, oh, why are you not? All right, we're just going to take this. I'm just going to make this black. Oh. Black. There we go. Okay. Um, so if I paint this black, you're going to see what's going to do is it's going to paint off. It doesn't preview very quickly. Let me see if I click back and forth. Come on, there it goes. Now it pops up. It'll paint black in an area, okay? And where it's black means it won't show through. Okay, and then if I were to hit X to quickly switch to white, which it, did it do? It did not. It's supposed to do that. Okay, uh, I can paint back white, and that'll bring the white back. Okay, so that's how the masks work, if you remember. So basically, it, it's uh, it's 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 like penetrating through it. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna right click and add white mask just to replace what we have. All right, so I could manually do this. I could go through and try to draw like I could take like um. Like this chalk strong and make sure I'm painting black again and then paint you know like these edges like for the paint coming off right and that's cool and we could do that and that would be fine 
But what you'll notice is when they did theirs, what they actually did is they used um, some generators, okay? And I'll show you. So, like, because they used those maps in order to make that happen. So, we're going to do kind of a similar thing. So, what I'm going to do is on this mask, right, I have it selected. I'm going to right-click, and I'm just going to go to Add Generator. I want to add a generator. So, to that mask, I can add any number of things to this, okay? And you'll see in a second. So, I'm going to add a generator. Um, and it's going to add this little thing here. I'm going to click on this, and then basically these are the things they can use. So if you, what you will notice is they're basically those maps that we banked. So uh, baked. So there's the distance one, which is um, probably like there's world space normals, which we baked uh, the world space normals. There's curvature. Remember, there's that curvature map. There's the ambient occlusion map. Um, we could do base of all of these. Some of these are already sort of set up. Um, so I'm just going to use dirt because dirt's kind of like the go-to. So I'm going to click on dirt because dirt's basically a balanced version of those already together. Okay. And what that's going to do is if you look here, I'm going to hover over it. You can see basically it created uh, a mask based off of, and if I scroll down here, you will see um, these maps, right? And then um, where is it? Yeah, basically based off of these maps, okay? Now, what you're going to notice is that it's kind of the opposite of what I wanted, right? Like, this part should be my um, silver showing through, and this part, the paint, should be. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to right-click over top of this again, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Invert Mask, okay? And that's going to go ahead, and it's going to add a Levels, uh, which is kind of like an adjustment layer, basically, uh, and invert what I had. All right. But if you look at this, obviously, this isn't quite what I wanted, but it's a thing that's there now. So uh, back on my dirt mask, I'm going to select the, the, uh, the, the dirt generator on my mask. I'm just going to basically try to make some adjustments here to, um, you know, make it work a little bit better. So let's take the dirt level way down because I really didn't want all that business. Okay. I feel like that curvature map could have been better. Custom grunge. Um, uh, let's see. Edge masking. I'm going to take this and go higher with it so that it tries to get more. I'm going to take the grunge scale up. Okay. Uh, because basically it's creating the, that grunginess, the, the, the craggly, noisy stuff. I'm going to take the grunge amount down, though, because I don't want to go too nuts with it. I'm just trying to get a little bit on there, but it's not giving me, let's see, dirt contrast. Let's go up a little bit more. Uh, let's see, let's look at the micro details. Let's try standard. Is that better? It's not really. Okay. Curvature intensity. Let's go ahead and add... Uh, See if we pop that up, if that helps. Seem to do high details, intensity, AIO, radius. Don't care that much about that. Okay. I'm gonna just up the dirt level a little bit, just to add a little bit more wear to it. It's definitely giving us these chips. I wish it was just doing a little bit more there. Um, looks like it's using a lot of the ambient occlusion, but that's not really what I was after. I was more after these edges, but okay. Um, okay, so that basically did that. Now, you might want to do something where, um, you know, uh, if I try to paint on this mask, you can see um, I'm not really going to be able to do it. It'll act like I can, but I actually can't because it's using this generator. So on top of this, um, what I can do is add a add a paint layer, add paint, okay? And now this will add on top after the dirt is there. And what I can do is paint black and white, right? So I'm painting black, which is basically adding it. I want to make that white. And I can paint white onto this. And you can see I can custom basically paint on top of that other part. Oh, see, I just hit B because I was trying to make that brush work. That's the thing I was talking about. So we want to do display material. Uh, it's actually shift and, not shift, sorry, control and right click is the brush size. 
Um, so I'm just going to kind of brush these in just so you get an idea of how that works. I'm actually not going to worry about this because we're actually going to paint over that anyway. Um, but what I want to do is control minus. I'm going to go ahead. Will X work now? It's not flipping it. It's disappointing. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and just add a little bit of edge here because I wanted it to. So. Like so. Right. And then we'll go over here. And I'm just going to add a little bit here too. A little bit. Oops. My mouse slipped. Like so. Right. And so on and so forth. Um, okay. So you get kind of an idea that that added basically that paint layer. Um, all right. So let's say, uh, so we did those, right? Um, we did that, we did that. Oh, so then uh, there was another layer where basically they added that rust layer, right? So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna add a, another um, fill layer. And for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and take the base color, and I'm just going to do, let's do a, I don't know what this guy is, let's do this one. That was not what I wanted. Let's try a different one. Click that off. Click on this, and let's just do the Perlin Noise. Perlin Noise sounds nice. Okay, and let's do the parameters here. Let's see the balance. And let's go up a little bit more. I guess we want it in the middle. Contrast. Let's do the noise parameters, and we want to probably scale. We want to scale it this way. Uh, let's see. I guess I want to scale it up. It wasn't moving for it. Okay. Um, and then the height. Okay. No, all right. Image inputs. Okay, that's fine. And material mode. No. Okay. And for the material, let's just go ahead and put my fabric. And one of these. Mm -hmm. Rust course. Let's try that. Okay. And give that a second to kick in. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I am okay with that. So yeah. Anyway. So now I got this rust. But I want this rust to only be in certain areas, right? So what I'm going to do is again. I'm going to select it. I'm going to right click over top of it and we're going to add a, um, let's add a black mask. So nothing's going to show Then we're going to right click and I'm going to use a generator. And then on that generator, let's just go ahead and let's use, um, what's this one? Drip, dripping rust. I don't know what that one is. Let's try it. it might be fun. That looks pretty crappy, um, but it's definitely adding some rust to my stuff. Uh, and then I would basically just make some adjustments there. And then what you would do, um, so like kind of like we did before, I would select this layer, this layer, and this layer, and then make that into a folder. Uh, I think I didn't do it, so I'm going to select them all again. I'm just going to click and drag them into this folder. Boop. Okay, I'll close the folder. And that is not the same as this one. But you can kind of get how we did something sort of similar um, with it, right? Um, it's kind of dirty, but anyway. Um, okay. So hopefully you got a little bit of an idea. What I'm going to do in the next one is actually paint this. Um, and we will go from there, all right? So... Um, Basically, we just recreated this 
in an essence using um, relatively similar layers uh, so that you saw here. And then the next one we'll do is actually um, we'll use just the smart materials kind of work from there and then actually um, apply and make our stuff. Okay, so uh, make this look a little bit nicer.